And then I saw at some point your journey led you to India, and this was kind of like the awakening moment, right? So can you share a little bit about that with us? Yeah, exactly. So I was working in Silicon Valley. I just started to explore different ways to, I guess, hinder some of these side effects of caffeine, but also was trying to like heal maybe some of the depression and anxiety that was sort of underlying all of it and was just more or less being amplified by caffeine and activating the sympathetic nervous system. And around that time, I was painting like every night after I'd get home from work and I got invited to do an artist in residency program in Goa, India. And at the time, I'd never been outside of the country besides like Canada or Mexico. And I was enjoying my career, but I, I knew that I needed to sort of break myself open a little bit to really get to that next level. And I remember having a meeting with my VP of product at the time, who was my manager. And I was just telling him some of the things I was experiencing. Like I really felt like I had a lot in me, but I was sort of holding my, myself back. And he told me that he was like, Shane, you're, you're the most talented designer that I've ever worked with that doesn't know it. And I wow. think that that really hit me hard as far as to how anxiety was hindering my ability to, you know, be my highest self and reach my potential. And so when I, when I heard that, I was kind of like, it's time, like I, whatever it takes, like I gotta, I gotta get rid of this. I want to step in to figure out who I really am. And so I, I got this invite to go to India, live there for six months and work on an art show essentially, and had a free place to stay. And it wasn't like a, a lucrative opportunity, um, at least financially, but spiritually and personal development wise, it totally was. So I took a leave of absence from work and jumped on a plane and landed in Goa. <laughs> That's pretty amazing. And then uh, as you start going through this like rediscovery, what's, is it the tea that kind of sets off the idea to start the company or when were you thinking about how do I take this? Like it's making you, you feel amazing personally. And then at some point, just making that leap to the ultimate, like in terms of anxiety and depression, <laughs> yeah. right? Starting a company surely can set that on fire. And so just talk us a little bit through of, of when you started to figure things out. And then I, I guess at some point the seesaw goes, okay, I need, this can help other people. Right. And then that becomes the greater mission and sort of the fear kind of calms down. But what was that like? Yeah, I think, you know, in psychology, they talk about changing your environment and how that can change a lot of your internal and it can change your internal environment as well. And so going into a new country, obviously, with completely it was a completely different country, um, not just time zone. It had different beliefs, different clothing, different speaking, different. Everything was kind of like it, it allowed me to rethink my own cultural prescriptions. So like what was prescribed to me by my parents, by religion by school by friends like essentially telling you or not telling you but like giving you a sense for what is good what is bad what is cool what is not cool sort of trying to pigeonhole you into like an identity right and when i was in a new place like not knowing anyone traveling there on my own i sort of felt empowered to just be like it's a fresh canvas right like i could sort of detach myself from some of the things that were no longer serving me or at minimum at least see them um, in a different light because now it wasn't the norm. I was in a place where these cultural prescriptions wasn't the, the majority of people weren't doing that. So that was definitely really a big powerful um, insight that I had that took me back. And then part of that was also over there, chai is like where well, coffee is here. Like it's on every corner and like everyone it's in everyone's home and, and whatnot so I started drinking chai and I loved chai going to India and when I arrived there like drinking masala chai at the Wallas and it was just like an amazing experience where back home it was really tough to kick coffee for me um, just because of how ingrained into culture it is you know they call it like they serve like the third location where you have like your home your work and then the other and like coffee is like that let's go grab a cup of coffee so it, be, it was really tough. And in India, like I, I got to essentially replace that with something else. And I got to see what that feels like and was like, why can't I do this all the time? <laughs> like it, it yeah. gave me power. Right. And so when I came home from that trip, I found a masala chai blend, powdered blend that had no sugar in India. Like they typically will mix it with a lot of milk cream and a ton of sugar so it's not really like a sustainable morning ritual at least for the lifestyle lifestyle i'm i'm looking to live and this blend that i found had one seventh the caffeine of coffee so 
just inherently cutting down caffeine really helped me with anxiety and depression. It, it helped me sleep better, which I think sleep might be the one thing that kind of, it's a fix all for most things. If you can solve that, um, it really does help. And I was drinking this every morning and masala chai is, it's an amalgam of uh, multiple different ingredients, right? Like chai means tea and tea in masala chai is typically like a black tea. And then the masala is like a blend of spices where you have cardamom, cinnamon, ginger, cloves. And so I was kind of just looking at that and I was like, like if I'm gonna drink this every single morning before pursuing like my dreams essentially, or like my highest self, like what can I put into this to essentially like stack in a, a ritual or a healthy habit, healthy consumption habit that would serve, you know, my lifestyle. So I, I was like, focus is obviously a really um, powerful attribute when you're, when you're in like the entrepreneurship world. And at the time moving home from India, I was working for a tech startup and immunity obviously you don't want to get sick no one does and so i added some chaga and reishi oh yeah and for the for the focus i i turned to lion's mane and then i also trained jujitsu i've been work, i've been training jujitsu since i was a little kid i live a really active life outside of that too where i'm constantly like i drop in on crossfit classes a rock climb like surf all these things and the physical side is is something that's really really important to me both just because it feels good feeling that way, feeling strong and feeling um, vital in my body, but also because it helps with the mental side too. Mm -hmm. Mind and body are really connected. And so to support the body, I added cordyceps. And then I was doing intermittent fasting. And so I added cinnamon because it helped me um, curb like the sugar cravings that I would get normally around like 10 to 11 a.m. And then turmeric to help with inflammation and a little bit of sea salt. I felt like it really helped the flavors pop together, but obviously there's, there's some minerals, there's some hydration properties to it. But that was ultimately the, the formula that I was just like playing around with in my, in my home kitchen. No intention of starting a business, just moved back to LA, was actually working on another a startup that I co-founded with a friend that was a B2B SaaS, super techie company. Um, and this was just my little secret where I was working remote, like didn't even have people, nobody really knew I was even drinking this. I was just like, I needed something to make me feel good. And that was ultimately what I found. <laughs>